Welcome to the Wingman Show. My name is Commander Drew Brown, and we are floating like butterflies and stinging like bees. Rumble, you badass jet pilots, rumble. Welcome to the Wingman Show. My wingman, my man, my best, best guy in the world is Dr. Paul Thompson. How are you, Brother Paul? I'm doing well today. I'm glad to see you. Uh, you look a little bit different today. Your voice sounds a little bit different, but it's very strong and enthusiastic. And I'm sure you're going to tell everybody all about it. No, I was actually trying to hide it, Paul, but I guess I can't. But I want to start off this morning with a good quote. And it says, life is a book. And there are a thousand pages I haven't read yet. And I love that. That's by Cassandra Clare. And I feel like that, like life is just starting and there's so much that I don't know. And I feel so much smarter now that I realize I'm dumb. It just makes me feel so good. Well, welcome to the Wingman Show. Yes, you can see I have a neck brace on. And that's because I had spine surgery on my neck. And it's called an ACDF C3 and 4, C5 and 6 fusion. They went in the front of my neck and they fused together C3 and C4. And then they went down and fused C5 and C6. And that's called an ACDF, which means anterior cervical disectomy and fusion. Uh, believe it or not, here's the story. My son is a spine surgeon. My son does this all the time, this actual surgery. So when I went into a surgeon that was very well recommended, he wanted to do one type of surgery. I called Jacques and I told him all about it. And he said, hell no, daddy, we're not going to do that, which blew my mind. He said, we're going to do this. So now I'm in a quandary. I go back to the doctor, tell him what little Drew says. And he says, that's another option. But why don't we get a third opinion? Well, we go get a third opinion from the top, top, top surgeon in the entire hospital, orthopedic surgeon. And guess who he agrees with? Dr. Paul, he agrees with my son, Little Drew. Oh, man, was I happy. So anyway. Two out of three. Two, two out, out of three. three. Well, I wasn't going to do what Little Drew said not to do anyway. No matter what anybody said, I was going to do what my son says, because I know one spine surgeon in the world loves me more than any other spine surgeon in the world. And that's a little true. So anyway, I had it done. I'm healing. It, it was a major surgery, but I'm healing. I'm here with you now, Dr. Paul, and I'm a happy man. Well, that's good. It's good to see you. And it shows to your strength and resilience and that in life, we're going to have challenges that are going to come up in front of us that we don't plan on. We don't want but we have to deal with. Some of some are very, very, very unpleasant. But even when you go through the unpleasant things, realize that there can be light at the end of the tunnel. You just have to stick with it, take good advice, take care of yourself, and keep moving forward. Yeah, and you know what else I learned? Even though I'm a badass jet pilot, I'm just a human being. And one of the things I really have learned is healing takes time. I'm not big on time, you know? I want to live time. But healing takes time, and it is a time to rest. There's a time to play. There are times for all of this, and as you can hear my voice, it's time to rest now. But I am fired up about this show. What would you do, Dr. Paul, if you were driving on the highway, and all of a sudden, it started to rain, but it didn't rain rain. It rained $100 bills. <laughs> well, if I had a, let's see, if I had a net, and this is, I assume it's not from a, 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 an armored car robbery or a bank robbery and the bag broke and, you know, I'm getting uh, ill-gotten gains. But it would be kind of nice, I guess, if you had a net. And just and, stuck uh, it out the window. Yeah, yeah, well, you got to, you know, clean up the litter. Well, this is the truth. A man in Oregon actually did this. He was throwing out handfuls of $100 bills. He clogged up an entire interstate. The road was blocked for hours, people getting out of their car and picking up $100 bills. The cops finally stopped this guy, and he said, I just wanted to distribute the money. And they said, well, you can't do it that way. That's 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 crazy. That's crazy. Uh, I wonder if he was under the influence. Did it say that in, in the story? He was under the influence of over money, had too much money. 
Anybody Welcome. throws money out the window has too much money. Welcome to yeah. the Wayman Show, though. Dr. Paul and I are so happy you're here. And if you get a chance, why don't you subscribe to us on YouTube or you can hit us up on Instagram. But definitely our flow line for our frequent flyers and our frequent flyers are our frequent listeners. Hit us up on that flow line on wingmanshow.com. Wingmanshow.com. And guess what? You can write us. You can ask us a question. And we have somebody actually asked us a question this week that we'll go into later. But I have some wingmen. Here's the joke for our wingmen today. Two guys walk into a bar and one guy walks out without a kidney. <laughs> I'll explain that later. What do you think, Dr. Paul? You want those people to give us a little hit up on that YouTube? Yeah, definitely. It helps if you uh, if you give us a like. It helps with the algorithm, so we'd appreciate it. Just just takes a second. Just just hit the like, and do subscribe. Subscribe on YouTube. We'll be coming out with new things, and you really don't want to miss them. Subscribe on YouTube. And you know our show tries to do good. You know there is a lot of good in the world. So I want to know why are happy people happy? And they say only 14% of the population is very happy. Well, I wanted to look into why are they very happy? You know what the biggest one was, Dr. Paul? They had good relationships with friends. They had good relationship with some friends. Doesn't mean a lot, but they had some people that they stayed in social contact with. And, you know, being alone is good. I mean, I'm, I'm fine by myself when I'm with myself, but that's not how the human being is supposed to exist. You need social interaction. That's why I don't like homeschooling, because, yes, you might teach a kid the ABCs, but are you teaching them how to deal with fellow human beings on this planet? And that's what the most important thing is, I believe. What do you think, Dr. Paul? Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's uh, a lot of people are torn, you know, particularly in the, in the educational realm. Sometimes I think, you know, in individual, it's not good it's for the reasons you said small groups or groupings or maybe larger groupings is a better alternative. But uh, the challenge that people will have, young people will have going forward really is being uh, kind of digitally isolated. They'll have a lot of digital access to everything from uh, destructive things to very constructive things, learning a lot, but you, they'll be doing a lot of it just with themselves and whoever's on the screen. So that's going to be an area for society in general. But, you know, when I finished working, I was amazed, particularly being in China, sometimes riding the subway, the subway, the train system, and seeing everyone engrossed in their phones because they're, they're, they're big. They're bigger over there than here. And my, my information is dated. It's a few years old. But oftentimes I wouldn't get a seat and I'd be just standing up looking in like, you know, Couple hundred people sitting down, and everybody was face down into these these devices. And their system is much more restricted than anything you'll see in the U.S. But it consumed them. Yeah, it's it's it's. I think it's it's a human thing. People were walking with it, and you know, you can walk with it, have a screen or not a screen, have something in your ears, and they're talking. So hard to tell who's schizophrenic and who's not because everybody's <laughs> yakking and talking while they're going down the aisle. You know, maybe they're arguing with somebody. You know. Or or the happy. So, That's funny because yeah. ten years ago I wanted to do a TV show called "Is He Crazy or Is He on Bluetooth?" and just walk around New York City and film people talking to themselves. Are they talking on Bluetooth or are they just crazy? <laughs> Everybody's on Bluetooth right now, and right. you know, dealing with road rage. Let's talk about that because I deal with road rage very differently. First of all, I used to just jam with um, real funky music. Some bump and music. And the longer I stayed there, the more I jammed. But now I listen to comedy. <laughs> that's all I listen to on my radio in the car. And that's how I deal with road rage. First of all, I've cut off people. So I know I can't get that mad because I've done the same thing without knowing about it. So when somebody does it to me, hey, let it slide. First of all, it already happened. Second of all, there was no accident. Third off, Keep it moving. Keep it moving. There's one thing that's really important that I use all the time. It's called the serenity prayer. And it goes, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And the big word there is acceptance. You know, once we start accepting what really is, 
That doesn't mean that you're happy with it. That doesn't mean you agree with it. It means you finally accept it. And when you have acceptance, you have serenity. What do you think, Doc? Yeah, yeah. You have to, you know, be accepting of a lot of things. As far as the road rage goes, I don't I don't really have it. I've seen people do some incredibly dumb things, particularly coming out of COVID. There's a lot of stuff going on. A little bit less lately, but uh, it's always people in front of you, not behind you. Uh, I think, you know, this is like kind of an aside. I think before anybody gets a license to drive a car, at least in this country, there should be a, a mandatory course or section in physics, just basic physics, something on the driving test, something about involving uh, speed and, and friction <laughs> and stopping. I think some folks are just incredibly clueless because you'll see them do some crazy stuff. They're going to a million miles an hour. And then maybe five minutes later, you see them on the side of the road. I've seen this like a couple of times. I say, yep. Uh, you know, anybody could probably, you, if we could probably all cross the interstate one time, we could probably run across it and get through it. The more times you do that, the odds go against you. And I think driving crazy, either, uh, you know, with the car or with a bad attitude, it's just going to end up badly. You know, you got to share the road. It's not, it's not, the world does not revolve around you. That's very true. And, you know, you said in this country, you know, you and I have traveled the world and we've been to so many countries. Let me tell you something. You get in a cab in Italy, you're taking your life in your own hands. So if you want to know crazy, it's not Brooklyn, it's Naples. Naples, Italy, Naples. in a cab, without a doubt. Yeah. Well, cr crossing the street in Naples, Italy could be a, an adventure if there's like eight lanes of traffic and no lights and lights are advisory. That's 100% <laughs> that true. Times. Yeah. Well, we're sponsored by Magic Mind. And, you know, we take Magic Mind because we want to stress less and do more. And one thing, procrastination for me just goes away. I'm thinking the same things, except I start doing them. But you know what the best thing for stress is? And it's, you know, going back to happiness. Take a walk in nature. In other countries, doctors have started prescribing nature as a prescription for be getting well. And because, first of all, when you're out in nature, you're around a lot of oxygen. You know, that's why the rainforest is so important, because it produces so much oxygen for the world. Can you imagine, when, you know, when we were in Brazil, if you ever walk through the forest there, man, you get a lot of oxygen. But if you're feeling stressed, and the problem is, Low-income people, people don't have a lot of access to nature. Well, no matter what you do, go find access to nature and take a walk by yourself or with your children or with your loved one. Just take a walk and look what the world really has to offer. What do you think about that? It's Yeah, yeah, Magic Mind is great. I, I found myself more productive. And nature is it's good to get out and just get some fresh air. So many people never get outside to get any fresh air. Sometimes the air is not so fresh in a lot of places. But generally, it's better, it's better than just sitting inside in front of the screen. And we're at a screen now. But I'm not going to be at the screen all day. Get out, get up, move around, take a deep breath. Not a bad idea to walk around without shoes for a little bit just to get your feet uh, grounded with the earth. Actually walking on walking on some dirt for a period of time. Just just a little bit. Get out of the, the where, you know, wearing your shoes and, and socks and all that if you can. Toughen your feet get in up. touch with nature, I think, is what you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah, getting in touch with it. Yeah, just do it. It's, you know, going to the beach, if you can have a beach, going to a swim, please learn how to swim. Invest uh, time in teaching your children. Everyone should know how to swim. One, You know, my mother told me, if you go out with a girl and she doesn't know how to swim, you can't marry her. And I'm dead serious. She meant that. And she meant that if you're not open-minded enough, to learn that two thirds of the world is water and you haven't been exposed to water or you're scared of water, maybe you shouldn't marry that person. That's my mother. I mean, I'm not saying that, but I agree with her. Get to the water. Lots well, of guess programs. What? what? I'm starting to get texts that I'm starting to get worried about because it's saying, dear somebody else, let's just say, dear Michael, hey, would you like to go to this Japanese sushi restaurant today? Oh, I would love to. I had a great time yesterday. Boom, boom, boom. And they send it. Now, when the receiver gets something like that, you're going, oh, 
hey, that's a wrong number. That's not to me. And I texted back and they wanted to start a conversation, which means scam. But in this case that I'm about to tell you, this was no scam. Some guy wrote a test, a nice, I think it was a, a beautiful Bible verse or something. And it was kind of meaningful. And he sent it to the wrong number. So this woman gets this text and she says, I don't know if I don't know this person, but this this is such a nice prayer. And he and she responded. Long story short, they met each other. They were in different, I believe, counties or something. But anyway, they met each other and they have six children and they are happily married today. And that one, I guess it wasn't a wrong text because I guess it worked. But that one text led to back and forth, back and forth. They finally met, and now they're happily married with six children. What do you think about a wrong text leading to love, Dr. Paul? Well, that's that's unusual. I get I get wrong texts all the time, but they're usually trying to solicit money or investing in this or check this out, check this out. I don't I do a lot of stuff late this lately. It's been uh the lead report is spam. But uh I've never, I've never gotten anything like anything mistaken like that. But that's an unusual story. So we're going from a wrong number, Bible verse, to marriage, and multiple children. Incredible. Well, you know what that leads me to? It leads me to a wingman PSA. But I want to give a little preface to this PSA because this is the last one for number six on the eleven facts in life. And it is drugs and alcohol. So I always say there are eight deadly sins, not seven. And the reason is if crack and whiskey were available the way it is today, back then, they would have put this in the deadly sins. This is the wingman, ESA. From the 11 facts in life, fact number six, drugs and alcohol, the big lie, feel good for a minute and be miserable for a lifetime. Addiction is slavery. Drugs and alcohol, the big lie. What do you think, Dr. Paul? That's true. Uh, and I've said a number of times, just based on people that I've known, uh, friends and relatives, I've never seen anything good come out of drugs and alcohol. I hear a lot of jokes about it on TV. But in you know my experience, just as an observer, and knowing those who've suffered, I've never seen it. Um, you know the abuse of, of either one lead to anything good. Well, my great friend Mikey Proc told me, I've never met somebody who stopped drinking and regretted it. How about that there one? You. There you go. There you go. All right, our T-shirt of the show. Oh God, this is a great one. It says, you can't tell me what to do. You're not my granddaughter. I can't tell you how true that is. And especially now, I, my son, Drew Jacques Brown IV, and my daughter-in-law, Heather Brown, which I call my daughter. I don't believe in the in-laws, but it sounded weird if I said it together. But they just had a baby girl called Nori Z. Brown. She was a double Mickey Mantle and my 20, meaning she was seven pounds, seven ounces, and 20 inches long. It is on the screen now, the beautiful baby granddaughter I have now, Nori Z. Brown. What about that one in the t-shirt? And it's true. Like my granddaughter, Angel, I'll show you. I'll show that also. You can't tell me what to do. You're not my granddaughter. Yeah, she'll be bossing you around too. You'll have you'll have two bosses. No doubt about it. Now, how about a black beautiful woman who won Miss Ireland? Can you believe that? There's this girl called uh, Fig, and I'll show you her picture on YouTube. And all you YouTubers, don't forget to subscribe, please. But she's a beautiful girl. But not only is she beautiful, and she was Miss Ireland, she's also a NASA botanist, and she's working on plants that are going to be sent to the moon. The reason I pick her up is because she has these beautiful cornrows in her hair, and she made mention she wants to bring the beauty of black hair into the 21st century. In other words, I don't have to wear my hair like everybody else. 
But Dr. Paul and I kept going into this a little bit more. You know why they were made cornrows, the hairstyle? Because runaway slaves and slaves brought from Africa. No, 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 not runaway slaves. Runaway enslaved people and enslaved people from Africa would hide rice, seed, and grains in their hair in cornrows. And that's how they would get it out of Africa. And when they ran away, that's how they would take it up north so they could start their own fields. Talk to me, Dr. Paul, about cornrows. And that beauty. Yeah, the corn, the corn, yeah, the corn I guess I guess that was a practice, but I think that the cornrows goes back to actually goes to about 3000 BC. Uh, in different parts of Africa, they were the cornrows varied depending on uh, tribe, and it could indicate uh, tribal affiliation, power, and status in many cases. And I guess putting stuff in the hair was just a, a tactic used to, to be able to grow some food wherever they're going, which is rather fascinating. I'd heard something like that when I used to live in Tennessee from some folks in uh, Arkansas. I think that Arkansas is a very big rice growing area. And that was uh, that was almost like common knowledge, at least in the Mid-South, about just, just rice, you know, rice coming from Africa. The, uh, the corn with the seeds and the hair, that's new to me. Didn't know that. Neither did I, and I'm glad I learned something every day. And that's what we're trying to bring to you here in the Wingman Show. I'm not kidding. We want to bring something good. We want you to feel better after our show, not worse, like when you watch news. Anyway, how about this subject? Because you and I have both been in this. We're both jet pilots. We both flew prop planes and jets, bird strikes. Bird strikes have increased by 33%. And the bird strikes cause engine failures, cause death all over the country, all over the world. Birds are tragic, and they are tragedy in the air. Now, I've had a couple of bird strikes. They just busted on my windshield, and blood was everywhere. But Dr. Paul, have you you have any uh, incidents with bird strikes? Because off the carrier, we didn't really have to worry about that. No, never saw never saw anything at sea. Uh, you know, civilian aviation, yeah, it's small, but they're they're really small. I guess the most famous famous recent bird strike is the one with uh, Captain Sully Sullivan uh, of U.S. Air. I forget his his, his uh, first officer's name. He was important to apologize for that. But that miracle landing on the Hudson when they lost, took off out of LaGuardia, lost both engines not too high up, ended up landing in the Hudson River. Uh, definitely miraculous. Obviously, daytime, things worked out. Uh, as an aside, uh, somebody I know who was was a part of the movie when they made a movie about it. I think to, yeah, Tom Hanks was in the movie. Uh, there was a lady that was in the simulator trying to recreate it when they were trying to decide. You'll see what happened. And that was somebody that I served with in the in the Navy strands, you know. I know a couple people in the movies. But uh yeah, bird strikes I've had uh just a few a few and they tended to be small, sometimes so small you barely knew what it was, it was like a big bug, but but no bugs are that high. I know that uh at our company we had a big one one time, and uh guy was my he's a flight instructor in uh, 727. He had one come in and hit below the radome, and the radome in the front is pretty much hollow. And the uh, the device That's is just the nose of the airplane. Everybody knows, yeah, the nose, yeah, the nose of the airplane. Basically, it's basically plexiglass. Well, this thing, I guess, it was a turkey buzzard or something. Hit so hard, popped in, came inside. Someone came in the, into the cockpit. Oh my took goodness! Pictures. Yeah, right round around his feet. Right, and, you know, came came upward, came upward. And uh, they, they took pictures of it. It looked looked like a like a poultry factory. That's an ex that's an extreme case. Yeah, I've had my bird strikes have been very 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 small. I've seen them go down the left side. A lot of times I see them coming, you know, landing in the daytime. And uh, very interesting is that when you get close to them and they're kind of you know deciding what to do, they'll tuck their wings. They'll tuck their wings and dive. Always. Uh, which which is interesting, makes sense. And sometimes they'll tuck they'll tuck their wings, and sometimes they'll they'll like spread their wings and 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 make their own turn. I've seen that a few times. Always going into Memphis, though. I don't wow. know if I've seen it any. Well, remember when we used to fly to Japan and these other countries, and on the runways they would have robots, they would have uh, 
scarecrows. They'd have mechanical things. I think some of them even shot shotguns in the air. They had all kind of things to get the birds away from the airports. You remember that? Yeah, that's that's common. You see that in Japan, the things going in different airports use different things, uh, like in JFK, that Jamaica Bay area, that was a breeding ground for a lot of birds. They had a number of crashes related to that. Uh, so sometimes I think they'll go out, they'll, they'll shoot pyrotechnics, do different things. In Salt Lake City, they'll let feral pigs out or bring some hogs in, and they'll eat the eggs of the uh, of, the, of birds. the uh, birds that are sitting around there. Some places will use border collies. Apparently, the dogs are pretty pretty good in some places. Like in uh, Florida, they'll use collies to get rid of them. Dogs. Remember, I had a, there was a dog on a runway one time in, uh, in India. The, the dog wouldn't go. We delayed like a half hour. Dog would run up and down the runway. They were chasing and driving a car behind. It has nothing to do with birds. I thought I'd just throw that in there. No, that's good. That's good. You know, we have that frequent flow line, Dr. Paul. If you write us at wingmanshow.com, wingmanshow.com, we got a letter this week, and it is from a divorced male, a 42-year-old man from Arizona. He just got divorced, and he's asking Commander Drew and Dr. Paul, how do I get my life back together? How do I turn this thing around? I'm feeling horrible. What do I do to get my life back together? I'm going to throw it to you first, Dr. Paul. Okay. Well, I don't have experience in that, but I, I know a lot of people who have. And a couple of friends said that was had been the lowest part of their life. And I'm assuming this person who wrote us uh, probably got hit hard financially, you know, as as well as emotionally. Kind of knocked to the canvas and he's trying to trying to get up. He's asking how to how to get up. I guess it's one foot at a time. Uh He's got your life. I don't know if there are children involved. That could be another stressor. Uh, you probably probably need some time to heal initially. Rash. But I'll turn it over to you. No, I do have experience in that. My first wife, I was married for 23 years. I am now married for 22 years. God bless both wives get together. Uh, are friendly, uh, really friendly now. Uh, it took some time. It took some time. But I'm going to give you a little story. The worst day of my life happened and it's when my wife left. And I will tell you this. What happened to me is the worst day of my life became the best day of my life. Now, that, this is not a religious program, but it is a spiritual one. Because I do have a power greater than myself. Me and my dad, we call him Shorty because he's always around. But that's God. And at the worst moment of my life, I heard a voice say, if you have me, you'll never be lonely again. And it turned my life around. Not in a religious aspect, in a spiritual aspect. I was not by myself anymore. And what I did is I reached out to my good friends, people who were there, and time heals all. But the one thing about time you got to remember is you got to give time time. So divorce and death and so many bad things can be the very worst part. But I'm telling you, if you go find something bigger than yourself and start working with it and believing it, things will turn around. Let me tell you about our wingmen this week. Oh, my goodness. This is amazing. I started off with two guys walking a bar. One guy walks out without a kidney. Well, that's what happened. They had two people, Mark and Lynn Scotch. That's why I said Scotch. They went into a bar in Louisiana. Anyway, Mark started talking with this guy, Hugh Smith. They were talking, talking for two hours. And then you said, I got to go home. And he said, why? He says, well, I'm looking for a kidney. I have to go do dialysis. And, you know, they had a relationship. Anyway, they all parted ways. And my man started thinking about this at home, Mark. And you know what he did? He went back to that bar and he said, hey. I'll donate my kidney to you. This guy almost passed out. So this is the good part about this. You know, to give a kidney to somebody, you have to be a match. Well, there's this new thing on kidneyregistry.org. And this is real information. If you want to donate a kidney to somebody, you don't have to be a match. You can donate your kidney. They get a voucher and they will get a kidney that matches them because you're giving a kidney into the system. 
Anyway, Mark did that. They got their kidneys done. Both men were happy. And all of a sudden, amazingly, Lynn, his wife, said, I want to donate too. Well, tragically, years ago, Mark and Lynn lost their two-year-old. Tragic death for their, uh, their child. And Lynn saw that there was a two-year-old who needed a kidney. Well, obviously, they did not match her and the two-year-old. But she was able to donate a kidney to kidneyregistry.org. And she got a voucher. And she was able to save this little boy's life. And she said it all made all the difference in the world. Because when she lost her child, she gave life to another. Dr. Paul. Wow, that is great. That's quite a story. You know, someone goes into a bar, it usually involves a joke or a fight or something like that. It's great to give the gift of life to someone, to be selfless. It's also a great system in that, you know, you don't, if you don't have that match, that you're still making a massive contribution to the system, like you said, and that uh, when one comes available, you know, a match comes available, you get it, which was excellent. Nobody, nobody loses in that situation. Remember, the more you give, the more you get. And it's amazing what you get when you save someone else's life. Right. And that may that may spread to uh, other door, organ donation programs. Yes, they're sense. working on that. They're working on that. Well, Dr. Paul, for you, whatever is meaningful, whatever is beautiful, and whatever makes you and all of our listeners happening, may you have it now and may you have it forever. Dr. Paul, I pray for peace. I pray for peace, too. And we, as always, we appreciate those for listening, liking, and sharing the message. And please, if you're watching YouTube, subscribe to the channel. We'd appreciate it. Thank you once again, Dr. Paul Thompson, my friend. Thank you for your love, your time. And that's something that we won't ever get back. I want to thank all the listeners, too. Thank you so much for doing the show, Dr. Paul. We're jamming. Well, thank you, Mr. Drew, for inviting me on. Always good to talk to you. And ladies and gentlemen, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast or any of the podcasts. If you're looking at YouTube, uh, they say smash the like button. Don't smash it. Just press it gently and refer to use as a link to all your friends. You can also look at us on our website, wingmenshow.com, W-I-N-G-M-E-N, show, S-H-O-W.com, all together wingmanshow.com and we hope to see you in the future thanks again mr drew oh you're welcome and we're still floating like butterflies and stinging like bees rumble you badass jet pilots rumble may there be peace on earth and goodwill towards all men and women